Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm Richard McGee. I'm the academic director of a new MSc in Smurfit, uh, the MSc in Financial Data Science. So today in this presentation, I'm going to give you a little bit of background uh, as to why we have we've brought out this new MSc, uh, some information about who it's for, um, some of the content of the MSc, and then what hopefully students will get out of it. <clears throat> If at any point during the presentation you have questions, if you can use the Q&A button. So we have uh, Orla and Laura here who are going to help uh, to get these questions together and we'll, we'll answer them after the presentation. So the chat is disabled for this. Uh, remember to use the Q&A button uh, if you have a question. Okay, so just some background. Why have we brought out this new masters? Um, so technology is transforming the banking, finance and insurance sector. So there's a real revolution going on. And a lot of these companies that were traditionally banking and finance companies are almost becoming tech companies. Um, and it, due to that change, there's a demand for people with a certain skill set. Um, so this is creating many new employment roles and driving a demand for this dedicated fintech and data science masters, uh, which we've come out with. And this, this demand is replicated globally. So these are coming out across the world. Um, so just a little bit of detail on these key trends that are changing the finance and insurance sectors. We're seeing a lot more data. So people have access to a lot more data than they used to have um, and are making a lot more data-driven decisions. Uh, and they're leveraging machine learning approaches to make those decisions. Um, we're, we're seeing people applying a lot more alternative data sources. So we have something called now casting, where before you had forecasting. So people, for example, uh, or companies would make earnings announcements on set dates. Now people are trying to now cast what those earnings are point in time before the company even announces them. So the type of things they might be doing there is looking at satellite imagery of car parks to see how many cars are going to a department store, for example, um, or monitoring email receipts, the volume of email receipts from a, a company or, or a retail outlet. Um, other, other data sources that people are using uh, include network analysis. So <clears throat> if you're looking at an individual and trying to assess their uh, credit rating, you know, should you learn, lend to this person? Are they high risk or low risk? Um, now they're looking at things like their, their connections online and social, uh, social media. So who are their friends? Um, and if you have data on all of their friends, if somebody moves country, for example, they might not have a credit rating. Uh, but if you can see that all of their connections have really high credit scores, um, then that might indicate that they're, they're a safe bet to lend to. Uh, some other things that they're doing is looking at transactions in people's accounts. And obviously people have to sign up and, and agree to that. But if somebody is a regular saver, for example, or they have uh, you know, fixed payments going out of their account, that will all show up and that can inform um, a credit decision as well. <clears throat> uh, so all of these alternative data sources are, are now being widely used. So three out of four financial institutions now, now hold, house alt data teams. So this term didn't even really exist before 2014. So you can see how all of this is changing quite quickly and the landscape is changing. Um, and 90% of firms are expanding their alt data strategies. Okay, so you can see there where there's a demand and there's, there's roles being generated. Um, so some of the other trends that are going on, you're seeing account consolidation. So various accounts talking to each other, um, your, 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 your different banking accounts, savings accounts, <clears throat> improved user interfaces. So I think Bank of Ireland, for example, have a new mortgage app. So anyone who's been through a mortgage application knows what a nightmare it is pulling together all the different information. And, and that's, a, you know, that's a key candidate for, for having something that just automatically does all of that um, you know, online for you. <clears throat> Uh, we're seeing increased connectivity and enabling of economies of scale and crowdfunding. So traditional uh, outlets for people borrowing or for companies borrowing uh, or issuing shares now um, are partially being overtaken by uh, crowd, crowdfunding websites. So <clears throat> before, instead of going through um, an intermediary, uh, going to an investment bank, for example, and trying to secure funding that way, companies are going direct to people. Um, and we're seeing that also in how shares are traded, you know, the popularity of Robinhood. Um, and again, people are, are doing this on their mobile phones. And, um, you know, all, all of this is causing massive impact in, in traditional markets. Um, 
and there's a lot of benefits to disintermediation, so getting rid of a middleman, if you like, but the middleman also often provides a service. So they're vetting companies to see if they're really, you know, reliable and people should be investing in them or if they're not scams and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so we're also seeing transaction technology to enable all of this disintermediation, getting rid of uh, a middle agent, if you like. Um, and, and that includes blockchain technology, smart contracts, and we're seeing cryptocurrencies uh, being, becoming popular as investments even. Um, so all of these are major changes to the, the, the finance landscape. <clears throat> so uh, in Smurfit and Banking and Finance, um, we have a lot of researchers who are actively working in these areas already, okay, um, and doing data-driven research uh, across topics like investment, portfolio management, risk management, asset pricing, um, credit ratings and default risks. So all of the things I was talking about already, operational risk, sustainable investment, energy economics, corporate finance and corporate governance <coughs> uh, and banking regulation. Um, so some of the skills and tools that we have in-house because of all of that, those, that research that we conduct, um, data collection and cleaning and database development. I think everybody uh, who, who does any kind of research, you, you become an expert at that pretty quickly. Uh, machine learning, network analysis, textual analysis, uh, which is where you're, you're reading information from news stories, for example, or tweets and extracting um, signals from that. So you, you will see now, you know, if there's a plane crash or a train crash, um, <clears throat> you see that reflecting almost instantaneously into stock prices. So there's, there's automated trading programs that are doing textual analysis or are even signing up for um, proprietary uh, feeds that, that do that interpretation for them and give them a, a negative or a positive signal on a particular company based on news in real time. Um, and you see prices are now adjusting, you know, in milliseconds to, to events like that. <clears throat> and then uh, econometrics. Um, okay, so some specific uh, research examples. Uh, so a, a few of us are working on blockchain and cryptocurrency research, uh, looking at pricing and transaction analysis, network analysis on the actual blockchain itself, um, and, and trying to get information from the transactions on the blockchain. Uh, we have colleagues looking at textual analysis, again, looking at social media, for example, as an information source. Um, we've got projects on machine learning and data science for, for asset management, so <clears throat> constructing investment factors or risk factors using machine learning and data science with massive data sets. Um, data science for event prediction, operational risk, fraud detection, so uh, one of the professors has a ha, uh, has conducted research into protecting elderly people from fraud by looking at transactions in their in their bank account, for example. Um, and we've projects on using artificial intelligence for anti money laundering and greenwashing. Um, so that's just some of the in house uh, expertise that we have in Smurfit. Um, <clears throat> so who is this course for? This MSc in financial data science. Um, so it's suitable for graduates of engineering, computer science, mathematics, and business with, a quant with quantitative modules. Um, so uh, you could be from a technical background um, and, and looking to work in finance or, or in business. <clears throat> or on the flip side, you could be from a business background and you're looking to improve your technical skills. Um, so all of the programming or most of the programming on the uh, program will be using Python. Uh, so everybody will be skilled by the end of it, um, you know, in, in programming in Python and applying machine learning data analysis techniques in Python. Um, and that will be taught from scratch. <clears throat> so even if you don't have uh, a programming background, um, there's going to be a two week intense course in the second semester um, where all of your time you'll be, you'll be working on that Python from scratch, basically. Uh, so we're also looking for people with a talent and an interest in applying data science um, to problems. <clears throat> so you, you need to be enthusiastic about this. Uh, if you think you hate programming, for example, uh, you know, a lot of the course will involve programming. And as I said, it'll be taught from, from scratch. Um, so it's, it's important that you have an interest in, in applying data science to problems, particularly in the realm of financial services. Okay, so just a quick overview of the curriculum. 
So in the autumn semester, that is common with say the MSc in finance, the MSc in quant finance. So if you were coming, for example, from a non-business background, you would get up to speed quite quickly on capital markets, financial theory, uh, risk management, all of these key financial concepts that are important in, in finance and insurance markets. <clears throat> and then in the spring semester, um, that, that is going to be specialized for the MSc in financial data science. So there's a module on banking and finance in the digital age, which is all about the changes that are happening um, to banking and finance and will include blockchains and cryptocurrency um, <clears throat> and, and those kind of topics. Um, and then there's a programming for financial data science module, which will be Python based. And as I said, it will teach you from scratch um, how to, to code in Python. And um, there's financial data science where you'd be looking at some interesting data sets <clears throat> like the ones I mentioned before, uh, potentially for investment management, you know, predicting or modeling uh, revenues or earnings in advance, uh, or looking at blockchain transactions. And then there's a machine learning for finance course as well, which is looking at all the statistical and machine learning methods that you can apply to data. <clears throat> um, in the summer semester, then there's some optional modules that you can do, or you can do an industry internship, or there's a FinTech incubator project. Um, and this incubator project, the idea is that you come up with a startup idea. So uh, you, you'll be presented on uh, some sample companies uh, and startup companies in the fintech space. So some very sort of contemporary breakthrough uh, companies. And the idea is that you come up with your own, you identify a gap in the market, you come up with your own application for, uh, you know, it could be an app or, or another service or product. Um, and you work on developing that through the module, okay? And you'll get help and guidance in doing that. Um, <clears throat> so you develop the product idea, conduct market research and construct a, a fundable business plan. And within UCD, we have um, Nova UCD and, and uh, their whole purpose is just to support startups uh, in, in UCD. So, you know, if you come up with a good enough project, um, and, and it will be vetted by the module leader uh, and it, it will be possible to submit this to, to Nova UCD uh, as, a, as a startup. <clears throat> okay, so just a few words on um, graduate roles. So what will you do when you come out uh, from, from the MSc or what role might you target? So just in data science in general, uh, globally, the number of jobs have been trending upwards exponentially. Okay, so according to IBM, they were expecting last year. Sorry, sorry, my dog is barking downstairs. They they were expecting an increment of three hundred and sixty four um, to two point seven million openings. Uh, so that that was expected in twenty twenty. So more than one hundred billion dollars of venture capital uh, has been deployed to fintech companies since twenty ten, and that investment is still growing substantially. And then in a recent bearing point digital leaders in Ireland study for 2021, uh, the two top scoring companies were the two main banks here in Ireland. Okay. So in terms of employment roles, um, if you want to just Google, you know, financial data science, you, you, you will see the number of roles that are out there. Um, and they cover the spectrum of finance, insurance and consulting services, investment banks, insurance companies and payment and credit cards and they're they're huge in dublin um so mastercard have mastercard labs here in sandyford in dublin which is a, a huge operation um so some relevant roles would include data science scientists in an investment bank a business insight analyst um a risk specialist for the federal reserve or a product manager for a fintech company <clears throat> Okay, so I'll finish up. Um, so just some information there. Uh, there's, there's information on the admissions site. Um, and just thank you everybody for your uh, attention. So I'll pass over to uh, Orla and Laura now uh, for any questions. Hi Richard, thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, I suppose I just had a, a, a couple of questions that you know the, the, the attendees in the audience might be interested in, in, in hearing more about. Um, obviously, this is a new program. Um, will there be an opportunity for um, students on the program to connect with potential employers throughout the year um, via company presentations? Or is there anything kind of set up within the program to, to connect with employers? 
Yeah, so we will definitely uh, we we will definitely aim to have some company presentations and and uh, people from some of these leading companies come in uh, and 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 present on on their their companies and what they're doing. Um, and also, there is an internship opportunity there um, for students in in the summer. Um, you know, so they they will get support uh, from the careers office in, in trying to, to secure an internship. And, and again, you know, um, this is obviously the first year of the master's, uh, you know, it's, a, it, it's um, so it's very much about trying to get the, the name and the brand out there th this year. And we'll be doing as much as we can, you know, to do that. And obviously Smurfit have huge links across, you know, uh, finance in Ireland and finance and banking. It's got a, it's got a really good brand. And that, that would hopefully open a lot of doors for students as well. <clears throat> Great. And just going back to another thing that you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, you were speaking about some of the, the faculty research that's been conducted in the banking and finance area. And some of it's yeah. really, really fascinating. You talked about the kind of the um, fraud and the elderly and the, the stuff that the Cal Muckley is doing on that front. Is there a way that that's kind of being disseminated into the teaching? So obviously Definitely, that's a big thing yeah, for yeah. students, so, you know, coming to Smurfit that they benefit from that. Yeah, yeah very, very much so. So um, Cal will be teaching the machine learning uh, module, and that is, you know, an application of machine learning that he has, uh, you know, that he's actively done. And it's been written up in the Wall Street Journal, and I think they even have a licensed product out of that. So it's very much, you know, relevant and, and uh, industry uh, facing that that research that he does and um, yeah so uh, and then I'll be teaching the financial data science module and um, you know I do a lot of research on cryptocurrencies and blockchain and using using the whole blockchain database um, so that's something I'm keen that students will you know get their hands dirty with as well um, because blockchain is completely public so you can see all of the transactions so uh, you can see the, the guy who started up Bitcoin and his wallet and uh, all the Bitcoin that's still in there. Um, you know, you can see how much people are gambling on the blockchain, for example, day to day. There's a lot of questions you can you can query the data um, and, uh, you know, that that will be one application. Um, so students will be will be getting very used to handling database databases uh, and querying databases in in um, using using various querying languages. So that that is something that uh, you know, it definitely will be research, uh, research driven, a lot of the teaching. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And just to address some of the questions that have actually come in um, throughout the session. One question, um, is it offered part time? And uh, what other latest tech will you learn on the course? And uh, what is the breakdown between practical versus theory? So maybe if we address the, the, the first part, which is it offered for, for um, part time? And what's the break, breakdown between kind of practical versus theory? Yes, yeah, so it is um, offered part time you know, in, in the same format that all the masters in Smurfit are offered over a two year, uh, two year basis. Um, and then in terms of practical versus theory, I mean, um, the goal is in, in that second semester, you know, students will be, will have their laptops and be interactively working all of the time on these things in the, in, in, uh, in the uh, programming module, the data science module, um, and in the machine learning modules. So everything will be applied in those and, and people, it will be very much, um, you know, exploring data sets. <clears throat> uh, so that that won't be theoretical, you know, obviously there's some theory and introduction, but it's, it's very much going to be, uh, those are going to be practical courses. Yeah. Um, and then the banking and finance in the digital age is a, is, is, is a more theoretical course. You know, it's all about, you know, <clears throat> Um, the the new technologies that are emerging and blockchain and cryptocurrencies and smart contracts and, and all of that. Um, so so that would be the breakdown in in terms of that, uh, that semester. <clears throat> Great. And we have a question here just about um, eligibility, and I think you may have answered this within the presentation. So I do not have a background in finance. So this this particular student is from an engineering background, and they're wondering: Is there any prerequisite in finance required? before applying to this course um, and would there be some sort of boot camp or any modules that would need to be taken? No, so um, I mean I was an engineer uh, and I did I actually did the MSc in quantitative finance in Smurfit. I, <clears throat> I know that first semester um, you can come in and, and you can do that you know and that 
that that will get you up to speed as i was saying on how how capital markets work um you know obviously it's if if it's completely new you you have to apply yourself to it to, to learn it but um <clears throat> Uh, you know, I certainly found that uh, you, you could just come in uh, for, uh, as somebody from a technical background or an engineering background, um, and it, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't a problem at all. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I, you know, it's definitely it's definitely possible, you know. Um, and, Great. You know, yeah, I would encourage that, you know, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. And there's a specific question here. Um, is credit risk prediction a field that will be uh, dealt with as part of the program? Yeah, so that's one of the big applications is, is credit risk. So I mentioned that, um, I mentioned that before, um, you know, that, that is one of the one of the key applications of, you know, this kind of data analysis. Uh, and certainly it's probably the number one application from you know, an Irish banking perspective, if you like, if, you know, the main banks, this is what they're really mainly interested in. Um, you know, obviously because the main part of their business involves lending to people. And, and, and that, that is one of the key um, applications deciding if somebody, uh, <clears throat> you know, how, how you can open up, perhaps uh, lend to more people without taking on massive risk, you know, and, and that's something that um, these, these methods would, would promise to, to, um, you know, to improve, you know, to open up new opportunities, people that standard data uh, methods or standard credit rating methods might rule out and potentially they might be fine uh, to lend to <clears throat> and you're missing out on opportunity. So yes, that is definitely something that, um, you know, is, is really important and, and uh, will be considered as part of uh, those modules, yeah. Yeah. We have a question here, Richard, from an international student. It may be actually a question for Laura to answer, and they're asking about the deadline. Is the deadline uh, is our deadline before thirty first July to apply for this course? Thanks, Orla. Um, so yeah, we don't have a specific deadline for applications. They're done on a rolling basis. So if you are thinking of applying, I would say to try and apply in the next week or so. So our applications have been open from the first of October. For this September so there are limited spaces so if you are thinking of applying try and apply as soon as you can and um, to make an application we just need to see your academic transcripts the CV and you have to answer two uh, questions just in regards to the program why you're applying and what kind of career opportunities you'd like from the MSc program as well but um, no there's no application deadline it's done on a rolling basis so I would say if you're thinking of applying try and apply as soon as you can. Great. We have another question here um, from Rasha. So what are the main differences in this module, FinTech uh, and normal business data an analysis and common ones and the ability to work as data analytics, even in non-FinTech? Yes, so I think I understand. So I think, the yeah. question there, I think the question there is, what's the difference between say a master's in purely in FinTech and then a master's in business analytics? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this is actually the, in the midpoint between the two of them. And that's the intention. It's like the two of them. It's, it's data analytics skills applied in, in the finance sector. Okay. So obviously, uh, if you just did the business analytics course, you're not going to get that first semester, which is all about capital markets and finance, finance theory, risk management, investment management. Um, and an investment manager, for example, um, you know, is is unlikely to rate that as highly or consider that, you know, appropriate for their business because they'll very much look for someone who has some kind of investment experience or finance experience. Um, so that will be the difference to the business analytics course. It's, it's um, it includes a finance specific component. Um, and then in terms of a master's in FinTech, it would depend on the, the particular Masters, so we we almost could have called this a masters in fintech as well, um, you know. But uh, in 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 terms of the, the weighting on it, it's it's you know very much looking at data science applied to um, the finance sector. So um, that's how the three of them will compare. So <clears throat> compared to business analytics, you're getting you're getting the uh, the, the finance training and the investment management um, and compared to say the, the 
the fintech, it's probably quite similar to that, but it's pro it may have more of a, of a weighting on the data science aspect than some other fintech masters, but it depends on the specific masters. You'd have to have a look and you know uh, compare it based on the actual curriculum. Um, so, and in terms of trying to get a job that's non-finance specific with, with that, I really don't know is the answer because it's not my, you know, uh, it's not my area. So I don't know how someone in a non-finance company would look at it. <clears throat> it's, it's finance specific. Um, so, uh, you know, you would have to ask the individual company or get some feeling from them and ask, you know, someone in HR, do you value this master's or do you value these skills or do you hire people from uh, a finance master's normally, you know, um, so I can't really answer that one, but um, I, I, I think that places it compared to those other two. We have a question here, Richard, about the assessment of the course. So how is the course assessed? Is it on a yearly basis or per semester? Um, they're also asking about, you know, with universities not being open at the moment, are exams online? But uh, maybe we'll deal with the first part first, how the course is assessed um, throughout the year. Yeah, so it's this, in, in Smurfit, there, there are end of uh, semester exams, um, normally in, in December, and then I guess the end of May. Um, and within that, depending on the module, there'd be quite a, a, you know, there could be quite a high practical component. Um, and sometimes there's midterms as well. So it depends from module to leader to module leader on, on how they, they do it. But generally there's an end of semester exam and then some project weighting, which could be 30% or 40% and maybe a midterm of 10 or 20, depending on the subjects. So that, that's generally how, how it's done. <clears throat> And then the last part of that question was just asking about kind of, you know, our exams online, given that the universities are, are, are pretty much online at the moment. Laura, this might be something for you to address. I know a lot of students over the course of the presentations today have been asking about the planned delivery for September. Could you tell us a bit about what, what the, the plans are um, in that regard? Yeah, thanks, Orla. So, yeah, at the moment, um, universities are teaching and all assessment is online. Um, so at the moment it's online, however, we're hoping for September that it would be face to face, but it hasn't been 100% um, finalised yet, so we should know better in July. Um, we have to follow the government guidelines, so at the moment they haven't um, yet stated whether it will be face to face or online, but we should know better hopefully in July and then we can let the students know, um, but it is looking positive, but again, it really depends kind of in August, September, um, you know, what the government decide in terms of the universities. Thanks, Laura. There's a question there, Laura, just about aviation finance in the, in the Q&A panel. I might get you to answer that directly, just um, uh, because it's specifically for aviation finance. Richard, one other question I had just in terms of, um, you know, the, 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 the time commitment per week in terms of class hours. Do you have a sense of roughly kind of what, what the, the commitment would be from a class hour uh, point of view? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard across um, across all the programs, the, the, the MSc programs. Um, uh, so you will be doing um, about eight hours of, of in class, I think, a week. Uh, if I'm so you've got 12 weeks per term uh, and you've got four uh, modules uh, and roughly two hours of contact time for, for each module over those 12 weeks. So that's a 24 hour total per, per module or you know, two hours a week uh, by four modules, I guess. So it's eight hours, um, eight hours. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And I think, this year they, I think this year they're doing it all. They seem to be doing it all in Monday and Tuesday um, in, in the timetable, certainly for the second semester. But um, anyway, that that's something, um, yeah. Uh, maybe the um to email the program admin about maybe or uh you know but yeah it, it seems to be all certainly in the second semester uh or sorry the first semester it seems to be all monday and tuesday lectures and then wednesday is left free uh for for the students and then um thursday and friday for other uh I, I don't know stuff that I'm not teaching anyway, so I'm not sure. But I, it definitely all the all the all the, the contact hours seem to be in the Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And am I right in saying, Richard, that the part-time option that was discussed at the beginning 
um, the, the classes are held during the working day with the full time students. Is that correct? So employer support yeah. would be would be needed for for yeah yeah it is it is yeah and they just I think they do it over two years instead of over uh, one year. So you just basically do half it one year and half it the next year. But yeah, it, it, it is quite a commitment, I think, to do it, definitely, yeah. Um, you know, in terms of, you would probably need some agreement from your employer and on all of that to, to, to get the time free. So, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, I mean, doing a master's while you're working is, is tough. You know, it is a commitment um, and it's, it's something you really need to be aware up front that you're committing to it, you know, you, you, you want to really want it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, one final question, which is actually an interesting one, and we'll wrap up with, with this one. Um, so the, the, the prospective student uh, um, is wondering, knowing that everything would be taught from scratch, but wondering, are there any books that you would recommend to read before entering the course? Um, you know, whether it's around programming or machine learning or finance, any, any book recommendations? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a few, a few books. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, Python for finance is one. Um, actually, the best thing is if somebody emails me, you know, because I have a few, I have various Python books here, but I'm missing another one. But, uh, you know, there's, there's all of these Python books are really good. Data science from scratch, Python for data analysis. There's, there's an awful lot you can do. A bit of light reading. Yeah, Python, uh, there's Python for finance, which is really good, which introduces you to various packages for finance, for time series analysis and, and that. And they're excellent because you can go and practice, you know, they, they generally start slow and that you can, you can go and practice as you go along and it's interactive. Um, so I really encourage people to go and do that yeah, in, in advance. Um, and um, there's an awful lot of help online, um, <clears throat> you know, in terms of if you're stuck with something. Um, and Stack Overflow is great uh, for coding tips. And, you know, if, if you're, if somebody else has had a similar question. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I'd recommend people get, get up and running beforehand. But it will be taught from, from scratch um, and, and hopefully it will be quite interactive so people can ask questions. And that's something I would definitely encourage, especially in that two week programming course you know, to ask as many questions as you can. Nobody, everybody's assuming you're starting from zero level. Um, so don't be afraid. And it's important that you, you know, you get up, uh, you, you get up to speed uh, within, the, within that couple of weeks before you go on to the more complex, um, you know, programming, data science and uh, machine learning modules. <clears throat> Great, well, I think we've run out of time. We have other presentations coming up. So um, I'll hand back over to you, Richard, uh, just to, to, to uh, close up the, the proceedings. Yeah, okay. Thanks Thanks very much, Orla and Laura. Um, and just to say, if anybody has any further questions, you can email me at richard.mcgee at ucd.ie if you have any further questions about the programme. Okay, thanks everybody.